good morning. Welcome to our worship service here this morning for the fifth Sunday after fifth Sunday of Lent. While you're there in the pew, I would ask that you would fill out the member or visitor cards that are in front of you and leave them in the slots on either end of the pews. Our general idea for the service today is how we look at our lives, especially in connection with uh, what Jesus did. We're thinking in terms of dying to our sinful nature and living for God, and in the same way that Jesus died to pay the penalty of our sins, we die to our sinful nature so that it doesn't uh, tempt us as much anymore. And then we look at how Jesus' death and his resurrection also gives us a spiritual life in this world and, of course, the promise in heaven. Before we begin the first hymn, I would encourage you to greet the people that are uh, worshiping with you this morning.
understand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are they whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. <clears throat> Almighty and merciful Father, we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed what we have devised and desired in our hearts. We have offended you and sinned against your holy law. We have done these things that we should have not done and we have not done those things that we should have done. Have mercy on us, Lord. Spare us, forgive us, and restore us according to your promises in Christ Jesus. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as an atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated for the hymn of repentance.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal God and Father, help us to remember Jesus, who obeyed your will and bore the cross for our salvation, that through his anguish, pain, and death, we may receive the forgiveness of sins, victory over the grave, and finally inherit eternal life. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson for today is recorded in the 43rd chapter of the book of Isaiah. We read verses 1 through 7. Here Isaiah declares for God again how God is the true God of Israel and it's because of him that uh, we can actually honor him and uh, look towards him as our God and Redeemer. But now this is what the Lord says. The Lord who created you, O Jacob, the Lord who formed you, O Israel, do not be afraid because I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you cross through the waters, I will be with you. When you cross the rivers, they will not sweep you away. When you walk through fire, you will not be burned, and the flame will not set you on fire. Because I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior, I gave Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seba in exchange for you. Because you are precious and honored in my eyes, and I myself love you. I will give people in exchange for you, and peoples in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid, because I am with you. From the east I will bring your offspring, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them back, and to the south, do not hold them. Bring my sons from far away, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, everyone I created for my glory, everyone I formed, yes, everyone I have made. The word of the Lord. Be to God. We continue with the psalm for the day as printed in the bullet.
second lesson for today is recorded in the fifth chapter of the book of Hebrews. We read verses 7 through 9. Here we also see reference to Jesus the Son about how he says he learned obedience. Uh, the, the idea is that since he was born under the law, he also lived the law, and part of that living the law was specifically for you and me. So he took our place as our substitute, living the perfect life. We read, In the days of his flesh he offered prayers and pleas with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was the son, he learned obedience from the things he suffered. After he was brought to his goal, he became the source of eternal salvation for everyone who obeys him. The word of the Lord. Praise be to God. Please stand for, out of respect for the gospel. The Gospel for this Sunday is recorded in the 12th chapter of the Gospel of John. We read verses 20 through 33. Part of this reading is also serving as the sermon text for today. And here we see how uh, Jesus is preparing the disciples for his death on the cross, but he also is uh, telling them that in the process of his work of redemption, God the Father is going to be glorified, and also God the Father is going to glorify him. <clears throat> now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we want to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew came with Philip and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The time has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I tell you. Unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it continues to be one kernel. But if it dies, it produces much grain. Anyone who loves his life destroys it, and the one who hates his life in this world will hold on to it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, this is the reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. A voice came from heaven I have glorified my name, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said it thundered. Others said an angel talked to him. Jesus answered, This voice was not for my sake, but for yours. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be thrown out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was going to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated for the next hymn.
Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As I mentioned earlier, the sermon text for this Sunday is a part of the gospel lesson for today. It's only four verses, so I'm going to read that over again. Jesus answered them, The time has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, I'm, amen, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it continues to be one kernel. But if it dies, it produces much grain. Anyone who loves his life destroys it, and the one who hates his life in this world will hold on to it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. This is God's word. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, dear friends. I don't know how many of you are gardeners, but probably most of you know how a garden works. You get the seed, or a farmer puts seed in the ground. Wheat, corn, oats, barley, whatever you want to plant, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what kind of seed it is, but if you take it and stick it in a jar, it's not going to do anything. It has to be planted in order to produce more grain. And when it is, the seed plant that's inside the seed gets its nourishment from what we would call the main part of the seed. So that main part feeds it so that it grows. It disappears as the new plant gets larger and larger. Ultimately, it produces grains or fruits or vegetables. But that first seed died. But that is exactly what Jesus is talking about when he says, that he is, going, is like a seed. Also the same thing with believers. Just as the seed dies to bring forth new life, Jesus died to bring new life too, to us, to the rest of the world. And in the process, as we uh, start growing, also there's a part of us that has to die as well. And that is the sinful nature. Notice what Jesus says here. Amen, amen, I tell you. Amen here means truly or for certain. Unless a kernel of wheat falls out to the ground and dies, it continues to be one kernel. <clears throat> but if it dies, it produces much grain. Jesus was talking about his own death. It was already Holy Week. And Jesus was preparing the disciples and the others for what was going to happen. He said that that was going to be the hour when he was glorified. And in fact, if you heard it, Jesus going to the cross was going to glorify God the Father because he was carrying out his planned salvation. And the Father specifically says, I have glorified it. He would be glorified by the victory over Satan. Jesus did not try to protect himself from what was about to happen. He could have, but he didn't. He'd em he emptied himself. He became forsaken even by his own father. But only by taking sin into himself as he did on the cross and remember, sin is death. Could Jesus then glorify the Father and bring us salvation? It was actually demonstrated by the resurrection, wasn't it? Jesus died, but like the seed, his resurrection brought new life, and he proved that not only was he victorious over sin, but he was also going to pass that victory on to us as well. There would be 
not only his own life, but the lives of people all over the world. So he was talking about our life. Jesus' death brings us life. Note how he mentions that the seed produces many more lives. In John 10, two chapters earlier, Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and have it to the full. And the Apostle Paul put it this way, He is also the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that in all things he might have the highest rank. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile all things to himself, whether things on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. At one time you were alienated from God and hostile in your thinking, as expressed through your evil deeds. Notice the change from hostile to loving God. And that would glorify him, of course, as Jesus brings that salvation to the people of the world. A single seed would never produce hundreds of grain silos full of new seeds. But Jesus' death does that. It's really spectacular if you think about it. And now we receive his holiness and his perfection. We have forgiveness. We are declared righteous, freed from sin. We are made part of God's family, all because Jesus, the seed, died to give us new life. Paul quotes God saying, I will be your father and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. But we have to remember that this parable that Jesus gives us is not only talking about Jesus himself and how he brings new life to the people of the world. It actually applies to us as well. So whether we like it or not, we have to look at the idea that we have to die to experience new life. And so I suppose I better explain that to you. The new life is already started in us. By faith, we have put down, destroyed, or at least are starting to fight against that old sinful nature, our dead sinful nature. It hates God and doesn't want anything to do with him. But that's the part that has to be put to death. So by faith, Jesus starts this new life in us to grow, and in the process, the old sinful nature dies. Emphasize this. It's faith all by itself. By grace are you saved through faith. And even that faith is not from yourself. It's the gift of God. So we constantly have to be looking at how we can put down the old Adam, how we can set aside its false ideas, some of which are, are really foolish, as if we could earn our own salvation. It wants to think that we're good enough for God, but that's not true. People have screwy ideas when it comes to spiritual things. Their sinful nature tricks them. A famous actress was once asked, why she was so generous. Her answer gives away her false ideas. She said, the higher rent I pay now, the better place I will have later. She didn't get it. She thought she was earning a castle in the sky instead of a shack. 
Bible specifically says, all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. So how can her giving more buy her a castle? We only have life through Jesus. Paul wrote to the Galatians, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I am now living in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And now that life needs to grow. A seed doesn't sprout and produce fruit overnight. We wish that it would when we plant the garden, put the seed in the ground, and hopefully the next day we have a large plant with all kinds of fruit on it, but that's not the way it goes. Our faith is like that seed that needs to grow and start. The faith is alive. It's what happens when the seed first starts to grow, but then it goes on from there. And we keep in mind that even the smallest beginnings of faith is what makes us children of God and heirs of eternal life. I guess you could say spiritual life is kind of like a grapevine. First you have the seed growing, starting to grow, and in that first year of growth it has to face the heat of summer, and then it endures the cold of winter. And that next year, there's a little crop, but it's not very big, but it's there, a small crop. Then as it grows and matures, there is more and more crop, more and more grapes on the vine. And that's the way it is with our life in Christ Jesus. Living faith grows. It gets stronger and it continues to produce fruits of all kinds, Christian fruits, sharing the gospel, etc. But here's where the hard part comes in. It involves the continuing death of the sinful nature. Paul wrote to the Romans, if by the Spirit you put to death the actions of the body, you will live. Indeed, those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. And that's never easy. In fact, it's usually painful. Our sinful nature doesn't want to die. It wants to get its own way. It wants to produce its own fruits of death, if you want to put it that way. And putting that sinful nature to death might involve something that we r really want or enjoy. It might mean, mean facing ridicule. It means dying to the lures of this world. And it involves producing more and more fruit. Jesus said, if the kernel of wheat dies, it produces much grain. So as we look at this whole picture that Jesus is talking about, his death brings us life. Our death to sin brings us spiritual life and it causes us to produce more and more fruit. Jesus said, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will endure. There's a passage there that in the Bible that says, um, and some people don't quite understand it, it says, you, basically, use what you have in this world, the possessions of this world, maybe money or time or abilities, but use it to work with the children of men so that when you get to heaven, they greet you and are rejoicing that you have shown them faith in their lives. And then you already have friends. You've produced the kind of fruit Jesus is talking about. Again, notify, notice what Jesus says. My Father is glorified by this, 
that you continue to bear much fruit and prove to be my disciples. Jesus sums it up. Anyone who loves his life destroys it. And the one who hates his life in this world will hold on to it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. So the encouragement from this summarizes like this. Let's live, grow, and bear much fruit. And let's do it together as Christians. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Please stand for the confession of faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again from the words of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. And he shall come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of life, who proceeds the Father and the Son, who is the Father and the Son, is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We will look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. In our prayers today, we include a number of people and families. We have prayers uh, for Beth Treeter, that would be Al Treeter's sister who passed away last Sunday. And then also we pray for the family of Mary Casson, passed away last Tuesday. And we continue to have our prayers for those who are holding calls to our congregation, Pastor Brian Krieger and Principal Mark Renner. We have also been requested uh, by the circuit pastor to say a prayer for uh, Richard Dufresne, who serves as the principal and upper grade teacher for Peace in Granger. He broke his hip on Thursday afternoon, so we'll ask for blessings uh, on the medical staff that they, their procedures work well and that he heals up quickly. We pray. Eternal King and Judge, you have appointed a day on which you will judge and declare the eternal sentence of all people. We thank you that your son's death to sin and resurrection to life has brought forth a harvest of salvation. We also thank you that you have made us part of that harvest of faith. Let the death and resurrection of Jesus cause us to put to death our sinful nature on a daily basis, and then let us live a new life of faith. Help us to produce a harvest of righteousness, and may the harvest be filled with works of faith which declare your glory, making us lights in this world to your glory and our eternal joy in heaven. We pray this in Jesus' name. We come before you this morning and ask you to comfort and strengthen those who mourn the deaths of Beth Treeter and Mary Casson. 
Remind them of the gift of eternal life you have given their loved ones and the promise of, joyful, of a joyful reunion in heaven. Lord, you are the healer of our souls and our bodies. We ask that you would be with Richard Dufresne with the healing power as he deals with his broken hip. Bless the efforts of the medical team caring for him. Let Richard feel the comfort and strength of your presence, and may he heal quickly so that he returns to his regular duties. We also continue to pay, pray for Pastor Brian Krieger and Mr. Mark Renner, who are holding calls to our church and school. Give them wisdom and understanding as they consider where they are able to serve you best in your kingdom. Be with their families as well during this time of uncertainty. We pray this in your name. Amen. At this time, we will have the offering. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who brought the gift of salvation to all people by his death on the tree of the cross, so that the devil who overcame us by a tree would in turn by a tree be overcome. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song.
We give, you thank, we give thanks to you, O God, through your dear Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent to be our Savior, our Redeemer, and the messenger of your grace. Through him you made all things. In him you are well pleased. He is the incarnate Word, conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. To fulfill your promises, he stretched out his hands on the cross and released from eternal death all who believe in you. As we remember Jesus' death and resurrection, we thank you that you have gathered us together to receive your Son's body and blood. Send us your Holy Spirit. Unite us as one and strengthen our faith so that we may praise you in your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we glorify and honor you, O God and our Father, with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Take and eat, this is the true body.
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, O God, the Father, source of all goodness, in your loving kindness you sent your Son to share our humanity. We thank you that through him you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We also pray that you will not forsake us, but will rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, so that we willingly serve you day after day. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for the closing hymn. Good morning once again. A few announcements this morning. Keep in mind, uh, the last of our regular Lenten services will be held this week on Wednesday at 4.30 and 6.30. And there's an update for the Lenten supper that comes between those two services. I'm supposed to, with emphasis, 
and an exclamation point, we'll have a buffet. We'll have hot dogs, chili dogs, pulled pork, tacos, nachos, something for everyone. You won't be disappointed. People are needed to help serve and clean up because no group is attached to this dinner. So uh, if you can help, I would encourage you to talk to Michelle Kubeth. Then there's a sign-up sheet for the Easter breakfast on the round table in the lobby. Uh, sign up to bring food and if you plan to attend both of those. And the emphasis is, even if you signed up before for food or attending, we are asking you to do it again. One, to make sure we have enough food because otherwise if we have a whole bunch of people coming and not enough food, we're going to have to work on getting more. And between services today, the Bible class and the Bible information classes are going to uh, be held uh, right in, in, in between the services in the fellowship hall. And at this time, Pastor Knox is going to address you. Good morning. Dear members of St. Paul's, after much prayer and many discussions with members of St. Paul's and members of Crown of Life, I have decided to return the call to Crown of Life in Hubertus. Yep. Very kind of you. Unnecessary, but kind. Thank you. Uh, it has been a difficult month and a half, but the Lord has brought me through it thus far solely by His grace and strength. Thank you to those who have reached out over the past weeks and shared your thoughts on the ministry at St. Paul's. I pray that these last few weeks have been beneficial to you as well in order to evaluate the ministry at St. Paul's, what your hope is for its future, as well as how you may help and encourage your brothers and sisters in this ministry. The Lord is the head of his church, and he will continue to guide and direct his ministry as he sees fit. In order to do this, he uses sinners like me and you and blesses our work. I know the Lord will continue to bless the ministry here at St. Paul's as he sees fit. Please keep the members and called workers at Crown of Life in your prayers, as they are our brothers and sisters in Christ, and are also seeking to build up the eternal kingdom of, Christ, of Jesus Christ. In Christ, Pastor Knox, myself, I don't know how to, how to end that, but uh, that is it. Uh, God's blessings on the rest of your day and your week.